Yeah, I'm like so good. I'm practically doing it. Oh my god, we hate this cheerleader. What's his name? Christian? What is his name? No, oh, well, we gotta go to the bathroom. So I'm sending us Sebastian. <laughs> Sebastian. I'll bash him. Hey, your dad's calling. <laughs> we we live with you. Dad, what do you mean? We live with what you. What happens if you go, why don't you come over right now? Oh, I think he showed up on the lot. That's hilarious. Dad, oh my god, he really did. He's gonna perform a solo routine. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to Tropes and Trash. I'm Ruby and that's Nyx. We're going to be introducing ourselves with our favorite books today. Yeah, what's the trend? It's if this, if you, what, how's it go? If you like this book, we can be friends. Something like that. So we have five books from me, five books from Ruby that kind of def encompasses our taste. And if you like any of them, then I don't know, talk, talk to us about them. <laughs> stalk us about them recommend us more that's kind of there that'd be great because ruby doesn't have enough on her tbr as we found out last video how many books do you have on your tbr 1832 according to my good read yeah i am well under 2000 so we gotta break it we need it to equal the year <laughs> from yeah. xenon of the 21st century <laughs> in the meantime we'll be playing sims once again so that hasn't changed. With so. our chaotic family. It's way too big of a family. I've reduced it in my yeah, head. Yeah, we killed the dog off. Well, no. Well, okay. <laughs> well, when you say it like that. <laughs> we didn't kill the dog off. So let's start with you. All right. Uh, so I'm going to start with something that's a little more current in, at the moment. Um and obviously i represent the trash in this duo so i'm gonna start with trash Got it. Uh, we're gonna go with crave by tracy wolf absolutely love this book so much it is awful writing barely a plot but it's so addicting first time i read it was with my mother so it holds a special place in my heart um, and to this day, I have not finished the series because I don't want it to end. You're not even close to finishing the series. How many books are there? I read the first two books. <laughs> yeah, you're not even close to finishing the series. Stand up, stand up. I, I don't know how many books are going to be in the series. So, like, Curtis is getting ready to take the stage. He's been practicing a brand new comedy routine that he wants to debut for the audience. Suddenly, he's self phone ring. President of the Plump Bob Pictures recording studio. Keep it tagged, Curtis Guru, whatever. Curtis must get the studio immediately and debut his new routine. Curtis will gain fan be promoted to the top of the... Wow, he instantly is going to be the top of the comedian career? Yeah, obviously. See? I prayed for him. <laughs> <laughs> Who's calling your husband? His brother. His needy brother. We've been telling you to get a job for like five years now. <laughs> Robin's just lovesick. He's like He never got him. over me. And you know yeah. what? So we're here for that plot line. We were supposed to be together, but the Zodiac sign just didn't match up. I had to marry an air sign or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, my hot take of Crave was that if it was a TV show or movie, I'd like it. It's very cringy writing. It's very cringy. Don't go into Crave if you want writing that sounds like it was written by somebody over the age of, like, 10. Mm -hmm. A lot of AF. Oh, it's written with a lot of slang, right? And didn't they reprint it so now it has, like, updated <laughs> slang or whatever? Which I think is hilarious. Yeah, if you have, like, depending on what version of the book you have, it'll say, like, there's differences in the text, which I found weird. My so mom some have it more was, AFs? It was for, like, fifth graders. <laughs> which, to be fair... She thought it was for fifth graders? Yeah, my mom when she was reading it, she was like, "This, this is this reads like it's for like fifth graders." No, like, yikes! And my mom doesn't read, and this was the first book she picked up. <laughs> good for her. Good for mom. It's it's good trash. Very good trash. You've you got... do like trash. So, Crave by Tracy Wolf is a book where a girl goes to a school in Alaska after her parents died to go live with her uncle and cousin and they are at a school that she finds out is a school filled with paranormals and things ensue <laughs> things ensue you just do normal teen drama you know it's just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
But with supernatural, it's just a fun time. You go into it and you're like, all right, let's. It's like if you get on a roller coaster, mm -hmm. you don't know where it's going, but you know what? You're going to survive by the end of it, and it's going to be filled with a bunch of, like... There, are, there are several people who have died on roller coasters. Okay, well, this one has been in, in service for, like, many a year. So it's all right. You'll 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 be good. Okay, my first one. If you like this book, we can be friends. It's The Cimmerillion. Which, you know, you can also replace with most Lord of the Rings books. But however, I'm going to focus specifically on the Cimmerillion because I just, I really love that. Lord of the Rings can be a little bit dry. He can talk about a forest and like the treetops and the clouds for about like 70 pages. The Cimmerillion is written like a history book. And if you love world building, you love lore, and you love fantasy worlds, nothing compares to the Cimmerillion. Full stop. This moth came over. That's how fire what I'm spitting is saying. First off, the Cimmerillion takes place in the world of Lord of the Rings, and it starts off with the creation of the world from their gods. It talks about the creation of their gods, the creation of everything. The elves, and then we have the humans coming of age, and this is Tolkien, and of course this was written with a lot of inspiration coming from the Bible. What's awesome about it is that it's 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 kind of like a collection of anthology stories because it's written like a history book. So it spans across massive, massive wars. The elves, how they go from the Undying Lands, they come over to Middle Earth and they settle down the places that we come to know and love in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. There's a lot of elven names, a lot of Finns. There's so many Finns. We've got Fingolfins and Finarfins and Finways and so many Finns. There's so many Finns. A lot of names to remember. I highly recommend taking notes if you're gonna read this book. That's like not me saying that. Like actually do take notes. Anytime I tell someone that they don't listen they're always like oh i really wish i listened later on and it's just so good like it's just from wars and stories of love ultimate oh my god baron and luthien is like one of the best romance stories of all time and we have you know um we have other stories like never take a girl home to your secret clubhouse because she's gonna tell the enemy and everyone's gonna come and your whole civilization is gonna get destroyed there's like so many really good like small like short stories in there and it all builds up to a larger picture um it's mostly the first age it's like a little bit in the second age like the fallen mentor and stuff like that oh, wild ride stupid sexy sauron you know we got spiders eating lights from trees and a guy that simps so hard for a woman that you know he becomes you know a constellation it, it's it's just wild it's just the ultimate fantasy time and highly recommend it for anybody who's like a huge fantasy lover can't get enough of it and uh it helps a lot when you go into that like with the lord of the rings because you understand the things they're talking about more you understand like um just a, a lot of a lot of the themes all of the players in the game and you, you just it's just great it is a he one of the heaviest and hardest reads you will ever read though but if you can get past that it's great <laughs> And if you can read that and you enjoy it, then we can be friends. All right. Uh, my second book that I chose was, or is, Night. It is a memoir by Eli Weasel. I don't know how you say his name. I read this book in high school and it was my introduction to World War II. Yes, it took me until high school to learn about World War II. I had a very rough upbringing. <laughs> I don't really think we're throwing World War II at like, you know, 10 year old so are we <laughs> look i just want i just want everyone to know that i read this book and they were talking about the ss and i was like i don't know what that is <laughs> everyone was like you don't know what the ss is and i was like <laughs> um so yeah and this book started my love for world war ii history um it is just it's really short it's not like super super long or anything but just everything that's in it is like super tragic um of course dealing with the material um and it's just stuck with me since so if anyone reads that and they want to talk about it i'm here it's it's an older book um maybe they still have you read it in high school but uh it's it's super dope and I like memoirs, and this was the first one that hit me and sparked my love for World War II, so I couldn't not put it on my list. Books that you loved in high school, can you name three? Books that you loved, sorry, books that you loved in high school that they forced you to read, can you name three? Yeah, literally, I just, Night, The Once in Future Queen, and Persuasion. Ooh, can you name two more? Uh, Black Boy and Siddhartha. What? Three, did you hate? Um, I did not care for 
what what's the one with the witches macbeth didn't care for really macbeth. hot take <laughs> <laughs> didn't care for Macbeth and I didn't care for I I don't remember the other one that I didn't care for I just got rid of it from my memory <laughs> but it was like <laughs> it was like I'm pretty sure it was like set in Asia or something like that it was in my and I liked the majority of the books in that class so like the Zen and the Art of, the art of Motorcycle Maintenance Siddhartha yeah I cannot for the life of me remember I read I think no that was an American one yeah, I can't remember the other one. I erased it from my mind. I have ones that I loved would have been uh, Jane Eyre, Pride and Prejudice. Really got me onto the whole, like, Austin fest. Um, what else did I love? Dante's Inferno. Loved it. She's afraid of the dark. The kids are afraid of the dark. The kids are scared. Yeah, but don't we have the nightlights? Yeah, there? we do so have the nightlight. Have her nap then. Nap lazily. Got it. I really liked Macbeth. I did. So I would list that one. That was a great time. Canterbury Tales was pretty good too. Loved Canterbury Tales. Canterbury Tales is great. We got to act it out and we all dressed up and I get to be the Reeve. So I get to be this like hooded guy in the back who just was quiet and judged everyone. And I was made for that role. I was made for that role. <laughs> the only part that was hard about it was that the fact that I had to shut up the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing, oh, ones I hated, oh. Hemingway, Gatsby, Catcher in the Rye. Oh, how I hate it. And I'm going to put a fourth in Antigone. Hated Antigone. Miserable, miserable. I, I, I like Gatsby. It's fine. I like the Mice and Men too. They're on my like lower, like I read other books that I liked more, but those were like, they were fine to, for me. Tate's a panicked poop. That's me anytime I, I'm running late to work and I still haven't gone to the bathroom. Well, speaking of... Books I loved in high school. Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> if you are a Pride and Prejudice, if you are a Jane Austen fan, if you are a British literature fan, we should be friends. I love it. I love Austen. I love the Brontes. I love Hardy. I love Dickens. I love British literature. But Pride and Prejudice is my favorite. And some people might be like, well, Lauren, that's really, you know, basic of you. And it is. And I'm okay with that, you know? You just sometimes you gotta embrace it. Like, you know, these girls are not ashamed of loving Taylor Swift, and I respect them for it. I respect them for it. You're not ashamed of One Direction, the fact that you wrote a One Direction fanfic. I will link that below. But I love it. If I wasn't Pride and Prejudice, it would be Emma. I love Emma so much. I love Clueless. Great movie. Paul Rudd looks exactly the same. I don't know what virgins he's sacrificing, but like, let me in on that ritual. Because he just looks right. But Pride and Prejudice is amazing because the way Austin takes such a hard look at her society is so incredibly ahead of her time. And I don't think people, like, realize that as much. Oh, this is a real family. We bathe and showering at the same time. <laughs> Damn, everyone's in the bathroom. <laughs> everyone's in the bathroom. And I just really love, first off, the beginning sentence of Pride and Prejudice is hilarious. And it gets me every time. And... Well, I guess, I feel like everyone knows what Pride and Prejudice is. But if you don't know what Pride and Prejudice is, if you, if you live under a rock, Pride and Prejudice is Who about... Are these people? <laughs> <laughs> it's really what it would be giving. So, we have the Bennett sisters. There's four of them. They, they're, like, slightly above middle class, but not quite upper class. And... Elizabeth Bennett is the main character, and she's an independent, strong-willed, very op opinionated, likes to walk a lot, you know, she just, you know how you go on Bumble or Twitter or whatever, and everybody says that they love hiking, she's, she's kind of like that, and she likes to read books, whatever, strong mind, and quick to wit. A new newcomers come to town. We got Bingley, we got Darcy, we got Bingley sisters, but they don't matter as much. We got, we just got rich single men coming to town. So Elizabeth, Elizabeth's mom is like, they have to marry one of my daughters, specifically Mr. Bingley or whatever, because everybody realizes really quickly that Darcy's kind of like a jerk, but he's like super, super rich. So he kind of gets away with it. He's also hot, but he's like, immediate looks, looks at Elizabeth and he's like, no. <laughs> so... She's not interested in him. He's not interested in her. It's like one of the OG romances, one of the OG like enemies of lovers. Like it's just phenomenal. We got like multiple romances going on. We got like all sorts of things happening. We got betrayal. We got heartbreaks. We got traumas. We got a lot of wit. We got so much banter. You can't even think about it. Absolutely is a must read. It's such a good 
a lot there's a good chunk of it that is satire oh try some light makeup obviously that's the answer ruby if it's his parents then you say i'm fine don't overreact they're not gonna tell him to put makeup on i don't know who he's talking Hold on. he's talking to his dad yeah if he was talking to like his aunt then he's like hey, i'll get you makeup <laughs> but yeah if you love things kind of like bridgerton it's just the the aesthetic the pining the dresses the conversations 10 out of 10 must read everybody should read at least some british literature at some point in their lives right and if you didn't like it in high school maybe it's not your thing or maybe you just needed a little bit more time and you'll like it now my favorite of them is persuasion persuasion is really good and i can super respect that answer love persuasion big fan of persuasion this is why we're friends because i also enjoy british literature <laughs> i I like persuasion. The reason why people don't like persuasion as much is because she's a little bit older. She's only like twenty six. People act like she's ancient, and I don't know. It's uh, persuasion's the the second chance. You know, second chance trope doesn't get as great as a uh, second. People aren't as hyped over second chance romance as they're like enemies to lovers. So yeah, but a lot of the time, second chance romance can be enemies to lovers. It's true. Here's okay. Well, I'll give a. Jane Austen crash course for your tropes and what you want. We got enemies lovers. You want that? You read Pride and Prejudice. You want is this? This isn't a trope, but you want like rich girl does matchmaking and turn and learns she doesn't know what she wants. Kind of like a friends lover kind of thing going on there. We got Emma. Second chance romance. We got persuasion. You want really naive girl who reads a lot of books and bases everything on life off those books and then lets that kind of get too wild and crazy. We got North Ranger Abbey. I don't know what trope that is. Um, I'm not even gonna try with Sense and Sensibility. There's just a lot going on in that book. <laughs> a lot. Oh, and then if you want like um, kind of step sibling romance, you want Mansfield Park. That's my Jane Austen crash course. Thanks for my TED talk. All right. My next book that I'm going to tell you all is Vengeance of a Mafia Queen by Siobhan Davis. I cannot express how much I love this book. <laughs> One, I love mafia romances, but then like throw in like, Awesome world building, badass female main character, good sex scenes. I'm all over it. This was great. This was everything I wanted. Both characters are hot. Both characters are like rational. It's fantastic and like rarely seen when reading Mafia. Um, it was just, just, I, this book made this author an auto buy for me and an auto read for me so anything by this author i will read and i've yet to be disappointed it is so good essentially you have the female main character who has had a rough upbringing basically was married to a psychopath of a man who was mm, essaying small youngins um and she worked within his network of people to basically come in and unalive him. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> to unalive him and uh, over take over basically his role in the city, in the mafia. Uh, and she does it successfully and then she goes to aim to like to take down this family who essentially wronged her and it's a like, years in the making this whole line this whole like plot and she finally goes to marry this family member or of the other family um to basically get back at them and they end up like your son's eating in class Interesting. He's that guy. I Maribel know. was caught being mean to Maribel at school. What are the odds? <laughs> Wait, is she mean to herself? Or is this somebody also named Maribel? That's hilarious. She builds this plot up for years. She ends up have marrying this guy and the opposing family. And they have, like, really good... What is it? Chemistry. They have really good chemistry. And... They're basically having to that he also has his own agenda, but they're like keeping it from each other. And eventually they like come to the same terms and they fucking take everything down from 
from within. It's great. It's great. It's so great. <laughs> it's great if you like mafia. If you don't like mafia. Yeah, it's very heavy in like themes and trigger warnings and content warnings. I can imagine. Something that Siobhan Davis always dabbles in. So like definitely a darker romance author. Um, but she does it so well. It's really good. Even the ending was just like great. He, this is one of the first times in a mafia romance that I've read where a male main character lets a female main character be a boss, essentially. Like he, he owns his own self, but he also lets her own her own self. But they come together in a way that just works. And you don't see that often in a mafia romance. So I just, I just had to be on my list. Such a good mafia romance. Proms are already happening. What do we do? What Should we, we flirt? Can't. Well, we're talking to Sydney right now. We can flirt. Not them talking over the speaker. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm talking over the speaker. Oh, look how cute. He's cute. Express my oration. Should we try flirting? I'm scared. <laughs> I got butterflies. Bold pickup line. The butterflies. Why wouldn't you just like comment his appearance first? What if he's not gay? Oh, is... you got friend zoned. Oh, he's baby's first friend zone. Did we say you yes? You know what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna obviously say yes. I'd rather go. Can with multiple people zone. ask us to prom? Um, I don't know if we've talked. To we're gonna go people. to prom as friends, but we're gonna leave as lovers. <laughs> I love that. I'm here for that. Okay. My turn? <sighs> Song of Achilles. Oh, my little babies. Oh, they're just so precious. Oh, I love that book so much. I love it so much. I have it like four times. I own it a lot. I own it a lot. It's right. Well, you can kind of see it's like right there. Oh. I love Song of Achilles. Song of Achilles. If you haven't read, so Ruby liked Song of Achilles. Everybody likes Song of Achilles. If you don't like Song of Achilles, you probably don't have taste. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. What's there to not like? What's there to not like about Song of Achilles? We have gays. We have Greek mythology. Accurate Greek mythology. And as like a huge Greek mythology nerd, I love it when it's accurate most of all. So... Homeboy just really wants to like, now we're getting water. We're just leaving class a lot. We're that guy. So technically the mythology between Achilles and Patroclus is one that has had a lot of controversy over the years because we have a lot of, and I'll say it, men telling the story with their obvious homophobic narratives. And they have pretty much erased what is very, very, I think, obviously a gay love story. I mean, we have these characters calling each other like their whole world and their universe and all this stuff. And the homies just don't do that. Madeline Miller does a fantastic job. Her writing is very uh, lyrical. It's beautiful. She really, really knows her stuff. I'm a huge fan of her. Anything from her is an instant buy. I'll even buy Galatia, which is a very questionable mythology story. That's why it's so short. So the story starts with Patroclus and he gets exiled from his home uh, for, you know, accidentally murdering somebody, as one does. And he goes to live in the home of essentially Achilles. It's essentially kind of like a coming of age tale with the two of them growing up and they're not really friends at first, but they grow like a bond over time. And Patroclus isn't a fighter. And Achilles, of course, is Achilles. He's the perfect fighter, the perfect son, the perfect everything. He's Achilles with the golden hair. And Patroclus is kind of just like the aw awkward guy kind of standing in the corner they just grow together just as you know people and they grow together you know with maturity and emotion and then the trojan war happens and you know the trojan war is this whole horrible thing it was it was ancient mythology to what we deem as ancient greece like it is the almighty when it comes to mythology so they go and they get shipped off to the war and it talks just a lot about their time there and 
it's it's just if you know greek mythology you know how it ends if you don't know greek mythology you're gonna learn a lot and it, like i said it is it is pretty accurate and Bella miller is just, just a phenomenal job it, it's a must read i think it's i it you have to read song of achilles at least once in your lifetime that's my book if it's i say if i pick one somebody has to read it's song of achilles it's gonna change your life i think yeah we had it as a book of the month last year we did um and no one had anything bad to say about it even those who don't really read those kinds of books were like it was pretty easy to digest and it was beautiful story <laughs> which it is so it's it, it is. Really and for really anyone difficult. who's like, oh, I don't want to get laid down. There's just like so much to it or whatever. Madeline Miller does a really good job of just like laying out the groundwork for people who are new to mythology. You don't need to know anything going in, but coming out of it, you can have a really good sense because if you want to start with Greek mythology, the Trojan War is definitely, definitely where you want to start. And she does such a good job of like encapsulating so many characters that we know and love. Odysseus, we're such Odysseus fans here. Great <laughs> job. Great job. I would love for her to do something on the odyssey or penelope or just like anything she writes i'm buying and if you love song of achilles you love greek mythology we can 100 percent be friends like forever because i'll talk about greek mythology all day long all day long I mean, especially feminist takes on greek mythology you will literally talk about any kind of mythology <laughs> i will talk about any kind of mythology all day long but i know the most about greek mythology yeah. <laughs> we're in detention yeah, well, we kept leaving. We kept class. leaving class. <laughs> it's not really my my fourth book that absolutely love. And if you love this book, we can definitely be friends. It is The Coven by Harper L. Woods, recently released, so it's still new. So I, you know, forgive you if you haven't read it already, but it is. Uh, basically about a witch who, what, did he die? Oh, it's her. Oh my God, yeah. our teacher died. <gasps> okay, we're leaving. We're leaving. We're not seeing this. We're she leaving. died in the bathroom. And homeboy's like, I gotta go. <laughs> Mrs. Coombs. Mrs. Coombs, I need to use the bathroom. Wait, what's her name? Coombs. Rita Coombs. Okay. <laughs> what? It's not Combs. I know. Coombs. I thought I thought I thought it was Coombs, and I was like, please say just say cunts, but it was. <laughs> but it wasn't that. Everyone wants to go into the bathroom so they can like cry about it, but they can't get in there because it's so small. So the coven is a book about a witch who ends up having to go to a school. There's a theme here. Do you see the theme? Um she likes <laughs> schools. <laughs> um, where there are like a chosen select few who are like the best of the best in their element of magic. What is happening? He's over here to cheer on his his little friend. crush. Yeah, his crush. Our friend zone. We break it out. We break it out. Um, so the best of the best of their elemental magic or whatever go to this school where there has like been a curse or something like that. Like people had died, so they hadn't really been bringing new people here, but they brought new people here and then weird stuff starts happening and then she starts figuring stuff out. All the while the like headmaster of this school is kind of like a little flirty with her um and she gets like this pull to him and then it ends on a freaking huge cliffhanger so i'm waiting for the next book but it is so good literally every chapter ends with you wanting to turn the next page and figure out what is happening it is a kindle vela story that got published into wow like a kindle vela story that you actually like and i you say know. is good i know I but i have I really think that this is because I enjoy the author. So I had no idea that this was Adelaide Forrest, who, surprise, surprise, is another mafia romance author. That ah, has. it's adding up. <laughs> so this, she is writing under a pseudonym of Harper L. Woods for what is now a fantasy um, 
dark romance books because she also wrote what lies beyond the veil which was one of our book of the months um which i also love so all around this author is just great i love her as harper l woods i love her as adelaide forrest and this is just so 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 good when it comes to the tension when it comes to the like storyline when it comes to just the like the what is it called when you're like i have to i have to i have to know i have to keep like i have to keep going just like just pulling you into the story to where you just want to keep reading so good um so yeah if you like fantasy also the demons are like vampire like which is another thing that i really love you see the theme sure. here schools vampires yeah um so yeah really really good really good you read it we can be best friends forever <laughs> well sign me up for that i would love to read it. i've actually been wanting to read it since you guys uh, um this is a bunch of you talk so highly of it it's been very high in my list it also has witches which you love and it's like with I elemental do. magic which you also enjoy i do <laughs> get on it <laughs> i've read two of your books you've only read one of mine Ooh, these are the two books i don't know i wonder what they'll be Okay, well, guess. What do you think I'm going to say next? Uh, the Iliad. No. <laughs> yeah, everyone everyone should read the Iliad at some point in their lifetimes. But no, that's not what I was going to say. Oh, her name's Christy. You want to be disliked by her, apparently. Psycho child. Uh, my next book is actually The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea. So <laughs> I love cozy whimsical fantasy in the girl who fell beneath the sea is just the most underrated book i've ever seen in my entire life like this book i do not get book slumps i don't this book put me into a slump like i'm still kind of feeling it like it's just the ultimate whimsical light-hearted wholesome adventure with a hint of romance that you could want it's just so feel good everything about it's just so phenomenal the entire premise is that she lives in a world where every year her village they give a girl to the sea god because in his loneliness he ravages the seas and you know the storms are bad so no ships can go out and like you know their village on the seas being like you know battered so they give a girl every year and for a little bit it'll calm the seas and then they gotta do it again because they can't find the true bride now this girl sacrifice she's not supposed to be the bride she's not but she sacrifices herself in place of the bride to go so she goes down into the tumbling into this world full of like wacky and fantastical spirits and it's all a korean mythology inspired i believe and you know ribbons of fate and just it's phenomenal if you love things like that avatar of uh avatar the last airbender if you love that sort of vibe you're gonna love the girl fell beneath the sea more people need to read it not enough people talking about this book absolute five star it, it reminded me why i love to read and it reminded me why i love fantasy and it was just it was just great it, it's just great everyone is it's really quick it's light it's a standalone so you have no reason to say no um it's it's written ya sometimes a little bit middle grady it's 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 very well written i i really have no complaints about it i would love for like a ya na kind of version but i'm totally fine with like what we got and you know just watching her try to save her village and become like the sea god's true bride or whatever it's just such a fan it's just a, a wondrous wondrous adventure so glad to have found this book highly recommend it beautiful cover too so like what more do you want covers covers beautiful yeah i've yet to read it but i will be reading it sometime this year because it was a book of the month and i tend to read all of our book of the months i'm sure you will be ecstatic once i pick it up <laughs> i cannot wait for you to pick it up i am going to absolutely lose my mind i'm gonna be so so excited yeah i also for song of achilles i didn't read it when it was book of the month either i read it in december last year yeah um, you tend to do that <laughs> i'm like oh lauren likes this book i'm not gonna read it right now <laughs> <laughs> i'm like read this now it's on theme you're like oh i could but no <laughs> yeah that's essentially how it goes and then i read it in private where i don't even like let her know what i that i'm reading it i just like zoom through it and i'm like oh yeah it was good <laughs> and to round this whole list out is peter pan by <laughs> 
JM Barry. <laughs> I love Peter Pan retellings, but I could not add any of them to this list because my tr- my heart truly lies with the original tale. There is just something that's so special about the original Peter Pan book that no wonder they continue to do retellings and inspirations of it. And it's just... It's true, you read a lot a of retellings of Peter Pan. Reason. What'd you say? You, you read a lot of Peter Pan retellings, it's true. Yes, I literally this year I've, I've read like three. <laughs> like, I believe it. And, and seeing as I read like a lot of, I read six to seven books a month, that's quite a bit for you know, to dedicate to just Peter Pan retelling. True. Um, I mean, I, okay, so Peter Pan is a story about uh, the If you live people. under a rock. Yeah, if you, you know, who are you? Who are you people? <laughs> <laughs> um, Peter Pan is a story about a boy with said name who is magical and lives in the land of Neverland where there are mermaids and natives and pirates and fairies and um multiple sea creatures and other things um and he travels to our world specifically to london england and he listens in um to wendy darling telling stories of peter pan to her younger brother because men have egos (laughs) yeah he okay well in the book he takes the stories back to the lost boys who live with him um, because they don't have any mothers and so wendy tells amazing stories and so he gets these stories and he takes them back to the kids but uh he comes in and his shadow gets loose and so he ends up waking up the, the darling children and they end up going to neverland with peter and you know adventure ensues they have to fight some uh pirates and they get involved with the natives that live there so, you know almost get drowned by some mermaids and in the end i love mermaids. they're like you know growing up is a part of life and you know we have Spoiler. parents and uh we're gonna we we gotta go back and peter you know helps him go back and 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 it's just so like I have like chills right now because I just love it so much. It's just so great. And if you know, like the uh, darker version of Peter Pan of like he used to, uh, like he's known to usher in children who um, pass away to the next life. It's just, it's just fantastic. The kid's a huge jerk, by the way. She could have done her homework anywhere and she came to her brother's room. Legit. She's an evil child. She's well, she's in a mean streak right now. The game said that she wants to be mean to people. She's she's a legit an evil child. She's mad that she's the second child. Be born first <laughs> next time, loser. She's mad she's the second child, and she's gonna be even more mad when because they've been giving all the attention to Robert Jr. when he transitions and ultimately loses favor with the parents. That she still is not gonna be able to live up. And still <laughs> never do. yeah, I cannot talk enough about peter pan uh just the movies the a- any story with him is just you want to be my best friend peter pan is the way to my heart and then if like anyone is a good writer i would love a peter pan vampire story <laughs> <laughs> maybe set it in a school <laughs> only you knew a writer yeah if only <laughs> okay now can you guess what my last one is? No, you can't. Hold, um, on, hold, on. hold on, wait. Okay. Have you read it this year? No. But it's a genre I have not quite hit yet. Completely. I've like partially hit it. The only thing I can think of is Regency. Ooh. No, because I was kind of grouping Regency with like Pride and Prejudice and stuff. The whole like Edwardian kind of era. Era? Era? No. You didn't pick any rom coms? I debated. I almost, <laughs> I almost put. Um, love in other words. Did my I? last book. Fifth the book. dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> Merriam-Webster dictionary. Wow, not even Oxford. Wow, it's a it's a it's a manual for a microwave. Because if you can build stuff, we can be friends. I can't. No. Um, it is Clockwork Princess, the Infernal Devices trilogy. 
Ah, the chokehold that series has on me. I read it so long ago, 10 years ago, probably. And I'm still not over it. I'm still not over it. It has everything. It's essentially, if you've read or have watched Shadowhunters Mortal Instruments, trash. The prequel trilogy, gold. Gold that has none of that weird incest subplot. So... This is an American girl. Her brother's working in England. He gets enough money to finally move her over there. She goes over there and then she gets essentially like some weird people pick her up and like lock her in a house. And then what do you know? She's getting broken out by, you know, shadow hunters. And shadow hunters, if you don't know, are like kind of like augmented humans. And they're kind of like faster and they fight against like, you know, like underworld supernatural stuff a lot. Super cool. They're all ruined out and tatted up. And, you know, we love that. We love that. And she is, you know, rescued by Will, dark, brooding, the blue eyes, Will. And then we got the light haired violinist, um, Jem and their parapetai, which are like bonded soldiers pretty much. They're like closer to brothers, they're practically like one soul, whatever. And she gets whisked in this world in, you know, Victorian London. And it's all full of, like, urban magic and, you know, battles and just, you know, the, the most phenomenal love triangle. It is, it is a well-written love triangle. You're not gonna, it, it's, it's what put me on to the whole trope to begin with and what spurred my love and nothing's ever lived up to it. It's just amazing. The whole trilogy, if you love Infernal Devices then we can be friends. I picked it because it hits my love of fantasy. And, you know, I already kind of picked an epic fantasy. I kind of picked, like, a cozier, like, more tight-knit fantasy. But, like, the romance fantasy aspect, I wanted something to hit that. So I chose Infernal Devices. It should be read. It's not yeah, a must, yeah. but, like, it should. <laughs> it's a classic. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely plan to pick it up. I have all the books. I have all the books. I will start it one of these days. Look at mac and cheese in my cauldron again. A witch kit just trying out here, witch. Your daughter is adorable. Look at her. Look at her hair. So cute, isn't she? Looks just like her mom. Actually, I think she looks just like her dad. She just has her mom's, like, color. She's kind of chunky. She is kind of chunky for a kid, huh? <laughs> Whatever. She's not super active. She takes after her Which dad is more than her what? mom. Okay, but the dad is looking fit, too, because he handles all the animals. He does. Oh, you can hug him. Okay, but look at Robert Jr.'s butt. But I think that's it. I did five. You did five. <laughs> we tried to choose ones that, like, you know, just kind of got the broad spectrum of, like, what we like. That being said, yeah. I still, we, we still both kind of left things out. But, you know, is what it is. We're down for Rex. Comment below with a bunch of Rex. We don't know. I want to know if anyone else has read the books that we've read. So, Ooh, obviously. If anybody else has read Crave and also thinks it's trash, but team up with it. me. <laughs> but if you think it's trash, but you love it, team up with her. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what you think about the Song of Achilles or The Coven, which I do really need to read. And let us know if you added anything to TBR because of this. Because, boy, does Ruby have a list of Rex for you so many and if you need cozy fantasy you come to me <laughs> I cozy fantasy yeah i know I but Legends don't Lottery. take don't take this from me i, think I okay. have <laughs> you know what i'm reading right now though that what? you would love what um that time i got drunk and saved the demon what i really like that because like i kept seeing i keep seeing that like everywhere but I